guys, a lot of you have heard me talk about beer and home brewing, so I want to give you a quick look at my beer cellar, see some of my equipment, some of the beer that I have on, on hand. Come on in. So, beer cellar, workshop, whatever you want to call it, this is basically where I store all my beer. If you want to come around and take a look at a lot of the different styles that I've got on hand, I've, on the top row here, a lot of different um, Belgian styles, some sour beers. You go down a lot of different uh, barley wines, which is a pretty popular English style. Um, a lot of the glassware that I have for the various uh, styles and beers that I have on hand. Um, next row here, we've got a lot of different homebrew um, ingredients and um, different additives and things that I use for the different beers that I brew. Um, and then on the bottom shelf, you see a lot of imperial stouts. So I've got four uh, different years of Surly Darkness. Um, three years of Dark Lord, which is a, a brewery out of um, Indiana called Three Floyds. Um, a pretty popular Imperial Stout called The Abyss from Deschutes, um, and a variety of others. So a lot of these beers, they're pretty high alcohol, and you can store these for, I mean, really indefinitely, up to, say, 10 years if you wanted to. Um, and because it's not pasteurized, a lot of it will um, continue to age and mellow out. So um, it's kind of a fun little thing that I do. But a lot of the... Homebrew equipment I have over here, um, it's nothing really special to look at, but um, I use this rubber made cooler for the grains that I use to mash when I, when I do all grain beers. Um, a brew kettle, some fermentation vessels, um, some of the glass carboys down below. So at any given time, I don't have a lot of homebrew on hand at the moment, but I've had up to three, maybe four batches kind of going at any one time. I actually have a batch here, if you take a look at this carboy. I brewed this beer about two years ago, and it's a Belgian-style Lambic, which is a sour beer. And it's going to age. I could let this age for at least another couple of years if I wanted to. And the bacteria that's in the beer that gives it the souring characteristic um, will, will just continue to kind of do its thing. But I think this summer I'm going to buy about five pounds of raspberries and transfer the, the, the beer out of this container in, into a different one with the raspberries, and it'll re-ferment with the new sugars from the fruit. Um, and create a whole entirely different beer. So we'll see. It's kind of a science experiment, you know, that I just, um, you know, like to play around with uh, different styles and different things, a lot like cooking. So you kind of put a few things together, see how it turns out, and if it's good, it's good, and if it's not, well, back to the drawing board. Um, if you take a quick look here, you can see my kegerator, which is where I store my uh, kegged homebrew when I have it on hand. So I've got three tap lines. Um, you know, it just makes it a lot easier for serving. Um, if you have people over, friends, parties, whatever, you can just, you know, whatever you've got on tap, you can serve, and um, away you go. So that's kind of the beer cellar. Um, thanks. <laughs>